Hi, it's Rich with Home Energy Hero. We're here at our client's house to perform a home energy audit. It typically takes about two to three hours depending on the size of the home and the information we need to collect. But the goal is to find out their a current home performance. So what we do is we go in, we talk to the homeowner, find out the concerns and the comfort areas that uh, they're having in their home, whether it's their, their kid's bedroom or the master bedroom, if it's in the basement and those type of things. But we're gonna find out from them what, what are the areas of the home that's the biggest concern. And then we're off and we, we take a lot of um, measurements, we take diagnostic readings and we're understanding how the home performs from the heating unit to the air conditioner to the duct system itself the insulation levels in the attic and the walls, uh, how the shell of the house is, what's the building envelope, how tight that is, and we, we validate that by using a blower door fan that's calibrated that uh, measures the, the leakiness or tightness of the building. We use an infrared camera to see what we can't feel or, or see with the naked eye to understand what's behind those walls and verify uh, our conclusions. And it usually takes, like I said, about two to three hours. Um, we have great idea how to make these, the homes more efficient and comfortable uh, at the same time. And we look at various types of uh, conditions in the home, and one is being the HVAC system, which is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Uh, this house has a heat pump. Uh, one thing to, uh, that's important about heating system is that they have a good airflow in the house and it's balanced. Um, when it's not balanced, heating systems can work harder and then you don't get the comfort that you want for the temperature that you're setting it at. We noticed that this filter was sticking out. Now it is the right size filter, but when you have an access panel, you want to make sure it's sealed because what this is doing is acting like a return and it's pulling air through here, may even not even go under and be captured by the filter. But when, you make, when you're when you making another return, the other returns aren't as effective. So making sure that this fits properly in here. The other thing that we did notice was, um, even though you can see pure later right here, and you just think, well, it's the label, there is a direction that these air filters need to, to be put in. So the filter has a direction on it. And they're usually indicated by an arrow, okay? So it's a directional flow arrow, all right? And that means that the filter works better one way than the other, okay? And in this home, the arrow is pointing down, but you want it to go the path of the duct system. So we talked about the path going through the return and then out through the supply. So we need to flip the arrow up, okay? And make sure that it's the right direction. This has an access door that we can uh, we can put in, but again, it was upside down. So totally understand where we can get uh, confused on that, but just making sure you understand the airflow. All right. If you don't have a filter door, which 40%, 50% of the homes don't have because they never gave you one, or it's an older system, making sure you seal this with painters tape, masking tape, foil tape. Um, in between filter changes is going to really keep this sealed and keep your duct system sealed. Sometimes we see water heaters that are set at 135 which can scald you but 365 days a year, 24 hours a day you're spending money to heat water that you wouldn't even use that hot. So pulling off the cover, looking down there and making sure that that dial is set between 115 and 120. If you set the temperature down you can save hundreds of dollars a year just on your water heating. Uh, we're going to talk about a few things with insulation and air sealing. Um, here we have uh, an attic floor. The insulation levels is okay. We want to have at least like 16 to 18. We want to have R49 up in our attics. Um, this looks to probably be about an R28, R30. But the insulation is the stuff that keeps your heat in your home. So the more the better. Like I said, in this climate, R49 is best. What we're looking at is uh, if there's airflow, if there's pathways that air can escape out the house. 
the more air escapes, uh, the more air changes in your house, and that can take your heated and cool air out. These are called top plates. These are the top of the framing of your interior walls. Over time, they shrink and they can leave a gap. This black insulation is a telltale sign that there's air that's traveling through there. Okay, so that's an indication of a place that probably needs to be air sealed. So the more gaps there are, the more air leaks out. You never want to put more insulation on something that's, a, uh, that's leaking air, okay, because it's just acting like a big filter. Getting a blow order test and understanding your home's building tightness is really key. Uh, this blow order setup, it's a calibrated fan that we use, and what we're going to do is we're going to, we set a baseline. We want to make sure that all our windows and doors are closed and we're going to suck the air from inside the house out. So creating a negative pressure in the house, bringing outside air in so we can feel those leaks and they'll be more pronounced. It's, it's kind of like um, the wind going by your house at 20 miles an hour is how uh, pronounced these, these leaks will show. Okay, so we'll start the blower door, we'll depressurize the house, we'll get a, a reading on the blower door, and then we enter that in and find out how leaky you are. So it's really important to do these blower door tests. Okay, so let's start it up and see what happens. Now we're going to take our infrared camera and we're going to walk around and we're going to see where the leaks are in the hall. Okay, so we have our blower door running, we're pulling air from inside the house out, and we're going around with our infrared camera to find leaks that we normally can't feel. And we're in the kitchen, and it has uh, soffits underneath the cabinets, and purple is cold, and it's about 35 degrees out. Uh, purple and blue are the colder um, temperatures, and this is giving us a good visual that there's cold air um, on this soffit. This townhouse actually has a cantilever or a bump out on the outside extending past the first floor. And when those aren't sealed, it's actually drawing air from the outside in and it's actually flowing across. You can see where the cabinets over there, I'm gonna use like a little laser pointer, I don't know if you can see, but the cabinets over there are really leaky, okay? And we're just seeing lots of air flow through here just finished our home energy audit um, we were able to find lots of great things in the homes that's going to help the homeowner with uh, efficiency and comfort measures we, we were able to point out things that immediately they can do so and understand why their home feels that way um, we're, we've got lots of data we're going to take it back to the office we're going to generate a report taking their utility bills they're going to see the annual savings for our recommendations and it's stuff that one they can do right away uh, there's great rebate programs that are out there that they can they can use to to make those measures a lot more affordable and the payback a lot less shorter so we've got the information we we've had thanks for coming on us with this little tour and we'll see you soon